So guys, it's January 8th, Monday, January 8th, 12, 18 p.m. my time here in Atlanta, Georgia. We just finished filming our Son of Sam part two. And I did this intentionally after so we would have this story in our mind. And you guys, for part three, we are going to be, uh, which you're watching right now, because this is going to be the introduction to part three. Jessica Jones is, has, has remote viewed or is going to rem remote view this case. And obviously she has no idea. She never has any idea what she's remote viewing, but she's always spot on. She does this for a living she helps find missing people all the time and so you guys we're pre-recording this because i'm gonna have actually have Catherine pick the blind the blind target it's called the blind target because jessica has no idea what it is so this is how we're gonna do it Catherine. i'm gonna have you hold all the information that we just spoke about with son of sam maury terry david berkowitz this satanic cult under meyer park new york city this whole thing hold everything in your head and i want you now to give me four numbers or excuse me eight numbers two sets of four Seven nine five four two six six seven. All right, guys. So Catherine just gave, gave me seven nine five four two six six seven. That's the blank target. That's all I'm going to be giving um, Jessica is those numbers. That's it. I can't wait to see how this works. It's fabulous. I did this with her with a couple of, with a true crime case. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't know if I can. But let's just say she there was a reaction offline to some of the stuff she got and she's been contacted. So, so girl knows what she's doing. And so that's all she's going to get guys. She doesn't know. She never knows if it's a true crime. She never knows if it's something paranormal. And so I'm going to send those to her. She was trained. Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I am so excited today because I've got two of my favorite ladies in the whole wide world. We're like we're like the global Nancy Drews of the world. We've got, of course, Catherine Edwards. You guys know Catherine Edwards. We do a lot of stuff together from her channel, Catherine Edwards. And then, of course, Jessica Jones, the cryptic huntress <laughs> remote viewer extraordinaire who um we i and, and guys you saw from the opening i filmed Catherine. Catherine gave the coordinates this time which those numbers were seven nine five four two six six seven that i sent to jessica to remote view now jessica just to make things clear just hand up to god you have no idea what this target is do you no, I just have some coordinates. I mean, I have a, I have some data, so I can I can tell you what I think it might be. But um, but yeah, no, I don't know what this is. I want our audience to know that we don't. Catherine, you didn't tell Jessica. I didn't tell right. Jessica. I've never spoken to Jessica before, though obviously I've watched your shows together. And when Bryce asked me to come up with the coordinates, it was completely random. I just held the subject matter and my thoughts and just said whatever numbers came straight out to me. And the rest is a mystery. So I am so excited for this. So I want our, I know I know people who watch you regularly, Jessica, know know how this is done, but I want our people out there to know that she has no idea but she's got data so i'm gonna change i'm gonna let you just take it away jessica let's see your data first and we'll tell you what what it is we had your remote view how about that oh gosh okay <laughs> here we go okay so well first of all when i first went into this target i, I feel like i was in a forest or like the woods or something because i was seeing trees and uh and so i, I was writing down some of my sensory data <clears throat> oh god i hope i'm not totally off target y'all okay but uh so i'm seeing green wood i wrote down woodsy that's not like sensory data but I, I was seeing i was felt like i was in the woods and and actually my sketch for my stage three was 
a bunch of trees. Okay. I wrote down running, hairy, oblong, tight, anxious, burning, late, dizzy, rapid. Those are some of the, some of my sensory data. Now, the way I'm interpreting this and things that I'm seeing, um, I wrote down fuel, trees, treaty, forest, and forest friends. Forest, that's what we call Bigfoot. <laughs> okay. So forest friends. Um, I was feeling short winded and out of breath, uh, having a little anxiety. I wrote down bend, fire on fire, rapid heart rate, REM. I wrote down turtle. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote down turtle. Uh, but I mean, I, I don't. I don't uh, filter. I have to write down everything. Um, but I wrote down zoned out or in the zone. And then I heard running laps or I wrote down run laps and burlap because it, it rhymes. But I was I couldn't sometimes I can't figure out what I'm hearing. So I have to write down everything. OK, so then I wrote down uh, dark, something that was open and vast. But I felt like I was outdoors still. Um, uh, I wrote down army. This is from my AOL was Army Senseless, a new path, trails on the trail, nail on the head. I kept hearing nail on the head, nail on the head, missing, or now something that was missing, missing information, tourniquet. Okay, like tourniquet, like that you would, um, sorry, my furry friend's over here crying. Sorry, my, my personal furry friend. Okay, uh, but a tourniquet, like you would wrap around your leg, like you got cut. Uh, bleeding, and I wrote down bleeding, and I heard will be found, will be found. Uh, but I, towards the end of the target, I was feeling lonely and like I was lost, like there was something that was lost or a person or a thing, something was lost, but something, I was picking up on some kind of missing data towards the end there. Um, so that's about it in a nutshell right there. Um, I, I didn't get super, super uh, more, like I didn't get further oh. into the target. Yeah. The minute you said forest, I kept thinking of Untermeyer Park when this was going on. Like you went back in time because I know Untermeyer Park at this point has been cleaned up. Should, Catherine, do you want to tell her what we asked about? Well, you go into the details, but I just there were quite a few things that pulled into that. So we were asking about the Son of Sam killings. Um. Mm -hmm. And we, Bryce and I have done a couple of episodes um, based on Under My Park about relation. How deep do you want me to go, Bryce, in terms of how I much? I mean, I, we'll just talk about it all, talk yeah. Back. So uh, looking at about what really happened, about the actual killings, but also going back in time to links to other cults that were going on. And a lot of what you said there was linking into what we discussed there, in the whole the missing information. So hold on one second. Let me just grab. Do you know who, um, Jessica, do you know who Mari Terry was? Do you know the name? No. Mari Terry? Catherine, I'm going to grab the book because the book just came in the mail. Do you want to fill Jessica in on Mari Terry and his book about? Yeah, absolutely. So with the Son of Sam Killers, and from the UK, I knew nothing about it. But with the Son of Sam Killers, basically, there was an investigative journalist that called Murray Terry that didn't go for the story at all in terms of what the police had said about the guy that was convicted so-called of being the serial killer the son of Sam because a lot of the evidence didn't add up so he basically spent his whole life really delving deep into the case to see where all the missing links were what was really going on how many links there were back to a satanic cult um wow. And unfortunately, he died and, and his work was tried to put under the carpet, poo-poo, because the official story had to be they had their man and they weren't looking into it any further. So basically, we and I will link our past episode down in the description box below, guys. Um, but we took this off of Jessica. I, have a, I had a friend who passed away, Doug Kramer, um, who was an ex-scientologist who stepped back after he got out of his mind control to figure out how he got fooled, like what happened. And he started deeply looking into, before he ever opened up his YouTube channel, the deep roots of Scientology and the three-letter agency, and it led him to the Son of Sam killing. And for those who don't know, David Berkowitz is the guy that's been given the label the Son of Sam. Um, but as you see in this title here, the search for the sons, plural, of Sam. 
And so David Berkowitz found incredibly over overwhelming evidence. I mean, you would have Maury, to be... Terry, Maury Terry did. Uh, Maury Terry, sorry. Yeah. Maury Terry found overwhelming evidence. As we said, you would have to be kind of an idiot to not realize that this was a huge cover-up. And it was coming from a satanic cult. Now, you when you said trees, forest, um, a building an army... Also zoned out. You said zoned out quite zoned a few times because we're looking at a lot of um, mind control here as well. Yep, mind control. Uh, we uh, David Berkowitz has admitted that Maury Terry basically was right. Um, now, the name Sam is interesting because there's lots of Sams. There's Sam Carr, whose sons, literal sons, um, was John and Michael, who both died soon after there was suspicion on them, John of unaliving himself and Michael of a car accident. And these letters, I don't know, Jessica, how familiar you are with the Son of Sam case. And I, you know, you're a few years older than me, but I know for me, I remembered hearing about it as a kid, but I didn't know the details. I knew it was some weird story about this guy in New York who heard voices from a dog. And that was it. But when I'm, I'm not familiar at all with it, I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't, I don't follow serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was. It was just some some serial killer or whatever. Well, when I was watching Doug's series on it, I was like, "Holy shit! This is so much bigger." It connects to Charles Manson um, through all these different uh, MK Ultra mind control organizations, and um, these were ritualistic. And the letters that so the son of Sam left letters behind, left one letter behind at one crime scene. Where he spoke about, and I might have to bleep these words out, guys, because we're going to try to keep this on YouTube, but drinking blood. Oh, I and, wrote down bleeding and yep. blood. Yeah. Okay. Um, Interesting. And they found, so Untermeyer Park is in Yonkers, New York. And back in the 70s, so this happened in 1976. So when Jessica, the first thing when you said forest, I was like, she nailed it. Because if you look at pictures from that time of Untermeyer Park, it was very derelict. Now, again, now correct me if I'm wrong for all of our Yonkers viewers or people from New York City who go to Untermeyer Park. But what I understand now, it's been cleaned up. But mm -hmm. back at that point, it was very derelict and it was very overgrown. And so, and the, the confusion, the these cults, this cult would go through these this tunnel system from the car house sam carr who was the father of john and michael and david berkowitz who was a neighbor and they would take this aqueduct like tunnel system into untermeyer park and do like horrific rituals involving german shepherds those german shepherds right i try to block that out listen it's so much easier to me to hear about humans getting killed than it is about animals animals make me just just so do you, and what was it you picked up with furry friends well oh, you know it's in it's interesting, you guys, that my my German Shepherd is over here was crying when we first started this video. So she's picking up on this, apparently. Well, that's okay. really said, that really is sad. And also, because I was trying to write down everything you said, Jessica, you also said army. Now, was it uh, which car? Was it um, John or Michael where he unalived himself? Was John all was in the army. army. John was in the army as well as David Berkowitz, but David Berkowitz was honorably discharged after serving for four years before the killing started. Yeah. And but uh, that one, uh, his body was found on the army base. And when they went to investigate there, they really got the chills on the army base and just wanted to get out of there. Yeah. And they said they knew he was practicing witchcraft. Yeah. It's wild. It's, it's, it's so fascinating because there's so many different layers and we didn't even talk about Catherine. we even forgot on our video to talk about arlene perry was, was perry her last name um over in this it was in the early 70s where she uh was found dead in a church in um at sam uh, stanford over in california and she had been ritualistically unalived um and, uh, assaulted ritualistically yeah. And David Berkowitz had sent a letter telling everybody that this was a, a, a satanic ritual, an SRA thing. And then later, Mari Terry researched into it mm. and he called the killer. He said, this is the guy who did it. 
he's a he's a warlock basically called it out for what it is and no one believed him and until till two was it 2018 they actually the arrest well and and he unalived himself before he could be arrested and he had um, all the books that they said he would have the, the guide the witchcraft book in there in his house he even had maury terry's book but there's something really that's given me goosebumps because when you were saying about missing haunted with that lady who was found in the church um and it was actually the security guard which again maury terry had called out and everyone dismissed it but the letter actually said that she'd been followed hunted down so she'd escaped and was living there with her husband and had got out of whatever she was involved in this poor very young lady you know um and they'd actually followed her there found her and in a church like she had gone to the church to pray well we know i mean i know churches are not not mm. really holy but most people feel safe in a church that's where they seek sanctuary and that's where she was taken out and so there is so much to this case and it's and i i will i will tag doug series again down below too because he goes through their connection with different churches and different offshoots of Scientology, which then connects to the three letter agency. And then it connects to these, you know, if you, if you get into Mari Terry's work, it connects to this guy who was big at studio 54, who would make, um, we'll say corn, corn dog films in his house um, for pleasure stuff. And then um, we're on. We're trying to keep this on YouTube, guys. So bear with us. And um, and he was also connected to a producer, Hollywood producer that lived on Long Island, and was famous for corny, uh, corny parties. Um, and the last woman that was technically the victim of the son of Sand, a woman named Stacy, who did not fit the description. Most of the women were like Catherine and like Jessica brunettes. The last victim was a blonde. So she did not fit the description. And it was her specifically that they had evidence that, that her unaliving was filmed without her knowledge from another from another car and sold as a, a corn based video for people who like corny type videos like that. I hope that makes sense. Um, I apologize again, guys. Not our not our choice that we have to use these words, but thus is the platform we're on. And so then it connects. So this David Berkowitz guy, this like guy that came from this. And I think I said this with you, Catherine. What's so interesting about this case from from the perspective of this group of controllers? Now, I don't see anybody's any human life as being disposable, but they always pick these patsies who have, quote unquote, disposable lives. Because David Berkowitz came from a troubled background. You know, he he obviously, I think that there was something going on in his childhood because he was, what was he showing Catholic signs of uh, arson? and? Yeah, he was an arsonist. And also in the letter. You wrote fire down, I, didn't you, Jessica? Did, on fire and fire. Yeah, burning. Yeah. I wrote them, burning fire and on fire. Yeah. And also you wrote something else down which could be linked because, um when the letter was left and this is how he um at one of the crime scenes and it was signed son of sam which is how it became known as the son of sam murders um what it said in the letter and again i've got to be really careful how i say this because of the platform we're on it said that the father who was called sam had been unaliving and um assaulting young girls and that they were buried and the trauma um so there's a lot of that sort of thing that comes out in some of the words you used jessica and and we don't know for sure but the the trauma that david berkovitz was showing and this letter specifically said that that the person that's why we don't think the letter was actually written by david berkovitz because the the real biological sons of sam were actually locked up in um the loft room and locked in rooms and could see a lot of this going on but couldn't actually do anything about it as children so it could be quite possible that david berkowitz because he was a neighbor had witnessed some of this behavior going on as well because yeah he loved to set things on fire as a kid and i know 
that that is a sign, isn't it, of of trauma? And that's crazy. I, I, because you said, will you read your list again, um, Jessica? Just one more time, everything that you found, just so we can hear it again. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so the sensory data um, is green, woodsy, running. Speaking of on something hairy, oblong, tight, anxious, burning, late, dizzy, rapid. That was that was my sensory data. Then I, I my analytic overlay of that. Uh, I wrote down fuel trees treaty forest forest friends short-winded out of breath anxiety bend fire on fire rapid heart rate rem turtle zoned out in the zone burlap and run laps and then i uh some more of my sensory data is um open and vast um, my AOL for that, uh, I started picking up on an army, something that was senseless, uh, something I, I was out. I felt like I was outdoors. It was dark. Um, I wrote down new path trails on the trail. And then I wrote down, I, I, I heard Nell on the head. And then I started, I wrote down lonely and loss. And I was coming up with a missing, missing information, tourniquet, bleeding. And I heard it will be found. And then that was the end. Well, missing information is very relevant to to everything because um, the crazy thing is, I'm going to have you, if you want homework, Jessica, there's a series on Netflix that they made over this Maury Terry. Now, at the end, they, they, make, they try to make Maury Terry sound like an idiot at the end because we know that Netflix is part of the problem, don't we? But, but it's interesting because you hear a lot of the people that experience this talk about this situation. Some of the people that got shot, like, survived it. And then you have a lot of the vic and and Catherine, isn't it interesting? Well, most were in the head as well. Yeah. Most were shot in the head, and you said nail on the head. Yeah. And one of the things that was so weird about it before they put it together in terms of so-called serial killer was the fact that it was so close up that they were shot and all shot through the head. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, one case the the probably the I mean, they're all sad because a lot of the girls that were shot were basically children, like they were like 18, 19, 20 years old. One girl was walking home from school with her textbook in her hand and the guy walked up to her. She put her book up to try to block it. and It went straight through the book into her head. Um, the first case, a woman named Donna, she was getting out of her friend's car in the middle of the night from going clubbing. And a guy came out with a trench coat on God on his knee and shot her. You know, so there's no motive. Like they, the, the police had no motive. There was no robbery. There were no assaults, nothing like that. They just were like target practice. But then we have Jacob David Berkowitz later. And it's interesting when you look at the footage from him right when he's arrested, you can tell he's under mind control, can't you? Yeah. Like what we know now of people who've been through some sort of brain scrambling, his tweakiness. But now when he's filmed all these years later, because he's still alive, he's still in prison, um, he seems a lot calmer and a lot more able to kind of speak precisely about what's going on and he does seem to back what Mari Terry has said that this was a group of he did he was not responsible for all of the shootings so um you know and, and it's interesting too I want to remind people that he because he pled guilty and because he was put into a mental institution for a little while they did give him the opportunity to parole which I know sounds very strange but he has asked with every parole hearing not to be released and towards lately he's just hasn't been showing up for parole healing hearings and he claims it's because he feels like he needs to be in prison for his crimes to, to pay back his crimes but Catherine we kind of alluded and correct me if I'm wrong I think he's afraid to well, you can prison. see in a lot of the interviews that he's very afraid and obviously we know it is possible to get to people in prison but he's definitely very, very afraid. And um, he also raises a lot of the connections with um, cults and satanic rituals and things outside of what he was, uh, outside of the basic straightforward serial killing. Yeah, yeah. And he's become a, a, a evangelical Christian at this point, which, of course, I have my, my own issues with that but if I, I think he's doing it from a very intentionally good place where he's trying to like correct his karma and you're right you can see on the interviews he has a huge scar on his throat from where you can see he was attacked at one point in prison so he has this huge scar across his throat so um 
And he, it's crazy to think that they would parole somebody who's labeled, because even though I don't think he's a serial killer, because I believe the the information that Maury Terry, that he was part, he was mind controlled, he was part of a, he was a Manchurian candidate, basically, and that he was part of this, he had gotten involved in this satanic group. But by the le letter of the law, he has been convicted of being the son of Sam serial killer. So by the letter of the law, why would they been parole somebody who is a serial killer? You know, it's very fast. So it's almost like the, the NYPD and the government of New York knows that really he's harmless. Does that make sense? They kinda... a, he did admit to some of the killings, but, you know, was saying that he had the voice of a dog telling him to do it. And then... And well, the furry friends you bring up, I know you say usually that's for like Bigfoot, but when you said furry friends, I was like, this group specifically sacrificed German shepherds and would drink the German shepherds' bloods too, which to me is just filthy. Um, and so I I just, when you said that, I was like, oh my God, the dog connection, which goes back to the process church, which we're going to cover in a later episode. Um, so yeah. It's wild. I, 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 I want you, Jessica, to now watch the series so you can see. I, I wonder if you're going to see more from your remote viewing. Um, did you get? I have to watch yeah. it. <laughs> did you get that it was a group? Did you feel like you were in a group of people when you were in a sensory? You know, I was picking up on a lot of different stuff. So uh, I, I can't say I felt like there was a big group there when I was uh, getting this data. Um, I don't know. Like I said, you know, I, I had no idea what this was. I was just, I was just getting information was just flooding in. So I was just writing it down. So I don't think I ever felt like there was a big group there, but um, I, I was mean, feeling like could be was four pretty five. lonely. Well, I mean, okay. David Berkowitz was probably very lonely and that's why he got sucked into this, this, uh, in the series, they interview this guy that kind of went to one of their meetings and it seems kind of clever how they do this because at that point when you're a teenager, people, you know, kids want to play around with witchcraft. They want to do fun little magic stuff. And it's, it's for most people, it's harmless. They end up growing out of it and they, you know, but do you remember that Catherine in the series where the one guy, do you want to tell Jessica a little bit about that? Like that panicky feeling that. Yeah. So he went along to one or two of the meetings and initially it was pretty harmless. And then he heard the, I'm sorry to say this in front of your dog, the German Shepherd dog being sacrificed. And then he was like, I've got to get the hell out of here. This is not funny anymore. This is absolutely horrendous. And he realized it wasn't just some harmless fun. They were actually serious. Yeah. Um, and also there were a lot of, in the building in Undermire Park, they found a lot of satanic symbols, bloodstains. Um, where did they find the bodies of the dogs? In the park in the park they were yeah. in the park the german shepherds they didn't even try to hide those bodies because it's not i mean because of mr t it's now a felony to hurt a animal that was one of the first things mr t did when he got to office was make it a felony to hurt an animal as well as a child people forget don't want to talk about that but you know to find a dead dog unfortunately is not the same as finding a human body right so they would just leave the dog bodies well we also have people say that there were also dead bodies buried in Untermeyer Park from human. And I'm sorry, if somebody's willing to sacrifice an innocent dog, they're mm. willing to sacrifice an innocent person too, mm. in my opinion. So, you know, it's, um, it, so they're basically going into Untermeyer Park doing these rituals. And I don't think it, it probably was like four or five people at a time. You know, the people in Yonkers at that time would complain about hearing chanting from the park and, and seeing like torches in the park but nothing this was in the 70s in new york city the nypd weren't gonna do anything right it, it, they were under they were defunded there was a lot going on in new york at that time they couldn't go manage who hooligans as they thought in in um in a park right just leave them they didn't i don't think they you know of course, there might have been some police officers that knew what was going on, but for the most part, I think some of the police officers were stuck in a corporate office and of, of the NYPD and probably just thought it was kids being kids and no mm. need to to you know they're you know they're not hurting anybody. They're just messing around in a derelict park, you know. And little do we know, there were actually adults there doing really bad stuff and setting it up. 
for these sons of Sam killings to happen. And it's interesting, something that Doug mentioned that we didn't speak about last week, Catherine, and this kind of gets into the process church. Their point was to try to bring on the end of time too. So they were trying to create a bunch of chaos and chaos they created. And so people will argue, well, why didn't, if this was a group of people after David Berkowitz was arrested, why didn't the killings continue? Well, first, who's to say they, 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 they didn't continue just in different manners. And second of all, if, if the, if one guy's already taken the Patsy, why are you going to bring attention to yourself? You know, they, they don't want to be caught. They don't want people to know. That's why they tried to bury Maury Terry's work. But the loneliness too, when you said that it was like loneliness, isolation. I felt that both for David Berkowitz and Maury Terry. Because this basically killed Maury Terry. This put him in the hospital, this work he did. So, mm -hmm. Catherine, is there anything else you want to bring up with this case and Jessica? I think it's quite interesting when you looked at some of the other stuff like Tourniquet and Doug. One of the things that Doug and uh, Maury Terry then made the connection is back to other cults going back a long while. And when you look at, say, some of the Manson things that they did, it ties in. You know, I know you could say that about a lot of gruesome situations, but... This is one of the things is, is the connection that this was much bigger. There were some very powerful people involved and the film industry was very much part of it, you know, making these films to be distributed in nefarious areas was very much part of it as well. Um, and paving so, new yeah. trails, new paths. Did you say new paths? Like new paths? New paths. Yeah, new paths, trails and on the trail. Like they're on, somebody's on the trail of something. Yeah. They're on, so that could be that could be Mari Terry on the trail. Yeah. That could also be them on the trail to um, create chaos in the world to bring the to bring about the end of time. Um, but I did pick up a lot of I don't know about you, Catherine, knowing the story. I picked up a lot of Mari Terry and what she was of, of what she was feeling too, with the loneliness, the anxiety. Because um, he went up to the he went to the NYPD. He was like, "Look, guys, this is pretty obvious that they're that this." There's a killer on the loose and you don't you don't have the right guy. You have one of the guys, but not the whole story. And they mm -hmm. shut him out completely. Case closed. It's over. It's done. You know? And tried to make him look like a complete lunatic. Yeah. And a lot of the witnesses, there were so many. Okay, so the other thing that was really significant was there were witnesses to a lot of the murders and all the sort of what do you call them photo fits but not photo fits you know where they draw the di the diagrams for that draw the pictures of the people from the witness statements none of them matched um with David Berkovich so they were all very very different and this is where that tied up with David Berkovich's story that he was present at them but it was different people actually doing the deed um, and, you know, some of them weren't even close fits, you know, so th there was so much evidence to show that there wasn't one person, but there was a huge amount of pressure on the police force to make an arrest and close the case. I mean, one of the witness, the witness testimony ske sketches or a couple looked identical to John Carr, mm. to Sam Carr's son, which is actually the actual son of Sam. Son of Sam. Yeah. Um, and it was in the in the document docu series. I'm paraphrasing. They see something like very rarely is an eyewitness wrong. Like you can usually see the resemblance from the resemblance from the sketch, and like when they catch the person, there is a you can see. But in this case, he matches none of the descriptions, and they basically the NYPD is like basically oh the witnesses are wrong. The NYPD is not wrong. The witnesses who were there and saw it happen. They're the ones who are wrong. And a lot of, the, I want to make that very clear. A lot of the victims' families that have, that survived and the people that did survive, they have backed Mari Terry. They have all, they backed Mari Terry, that he was correct, that David Berkowitz was not responsible for all these killings. So, um, and it and is. the car, the yellow beetle as well. Yeah. There was a yellow Volkswagen beetle that just, that was not the car that David Berkowitz was driving. It was, um, what, John Carr, Michael Carr, one of the cars had a yellow beetle so this whole thing you guys and of course i'll link everything down in the description box below and i'll link doug's series as well down in the description box below because that's part of what we're trying to do is go through his work since he passed away i have my suspicions about his passing but um you know uh because he was definitely a very strong whistleblower so um that was awesome jessica is there anything else i know it was a quick episode today guys because i know Catherine has to jump on a different a separate call but 
But is there anything else you guys want to add to this before we close out? No, this is amazing. I mean, I enjoy doing these. I do. Now, from an outsider looking in, because I don't know anything about this case, it sounds like there might be some insiders that knew what was going on in the police force. I don't know. I'm just saying. If they were so suspicious. Up, it's been, I mean, that was 1976. So it's been, I wonder if any of the, the lead lead guys, I know one of the Joe Bordetelli or whatever, he was on the series. My mic falls. I wonder if that's spirit trying to talk. Um, anyway, he was on the series, but even the people higher than him, I wonder if some of them are even still alive. Because they would have been like, the, the guys that were really in charge would have been like, what, their 40s and 50s at that point in 1970. Yeah. So would they even be still around? But I that would be interesting if someone from the NYPD spoke up at this point. Mm -hmm. Because the NYPD, I mean, that's probably one of the most famous police departments in the United States. And Lord have mercy, I'm not saying I would want to be a police officer in New York. I can't imagine what that must be like but um but yeah i it does seem like you know and todd and i've talked about that like we've listened to a lot of stuff about this like the likelihood for some of the police officers it might have been an ego thing to have to admit that you you botched the case for some of them they could have been in on it and been like we're a part of this too and we're not saying anything and there could be some police officers that knew maury terry was right but had no they weren't high up in the chain so they had no recourse to be like we need to reopen this case and you even said you brought up a good point Catherine in the series even when they bring new information to this day don't they just say shut it no. up yeah it's, it's gone far let you know so because there was so much pressure to have this wrapped up you know there was a new election for a mayor going on at the time and it was all very political so they wanted it done and dusted so that it was hidden under the car and no one was looking back into the connections and and um, when you go through the documentary, there's so many connections that, um, you know, oh, what tangled were, you know, to other so-called serial killers and cult activities. Um, I think one of the things that you were saying about the um, hunting and the missing really ties down to that victim who was found in the church. You know, the, the, the fact that it actually said that they were hunted down and no one sort of looked into that. It was... It was quite shocking, really. Some of the parents, the last victim, the the of the blonde lady, Stacey, yeah, yeah, wow. Stacy, and yeah. her parent, her mother was like, "There's no way, you know, there's witnesses. There's no way this was the person." But they just didn't want to hear it, and just absolutely tragic the fact that they the right people haven't been brought to justice. So absolutely, David Berkowitz did admit he was involved and he did commit some of the deeds. Yeah. but not all of them. It was very obvious he didn't do all of them, which means there's people still out there that did. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, I'm sure Sam Carr is no longer alive because he was quite elderly when this was happening. We know John and Michael are no longer alive. And we know that, that producer was the producer was found killed. The guy from Studio 54 that was filming this stuff was found killed. Um, their murders have now have continually gone on unsolved. Why is that? Why would a big producer... Have an and his girlfriend and his girlfriend just unsolved so you guys we know i i've said this before like there's no honor amongst thieves in this cabal in this this group this dark group of of satanic rituals they'll turn on each other they'll throw each other under the bus it's dog eat dog no pun intended with the what they Dogs actually, I think, are a lot better than these people. But, um, but you know, they're they're not gonna they're gonna turn on each other in order to cover something up, in order to hide something. And it seemed to me that with the people that with John Carr, Michael Carr, because John Carr, it did seem from some of his army buddies that he was about to crack. Mm. He was about to crack, and all of a sudden he's dead. Michael Carr, same thing. You wonder that with the guy from Studio Fifty Four and the producer and long island were they also about to crack mm. and speak and if so who took them out because if john carr and michael carr are both gone now and david berkowitz is behind bars then who was their killer was it someone from the nypd i'm just i don't know was it somebody higher up that knew they needed to take these people out because they were about to talk i don't know you know, it's just, thank God that's not the life I live. Could you imagine how stressful it must be to be in a satanic cult? 
I can't imagine like the amount of anxiety you would have all the time that someone was going to turn on you, you know? Well, and, and you have empathy. <clears throat> we, we have empathy and we're, we're not, we're not the same as that. You know what I mean? Like, I like to think that everybody's the same as me. And like, I, I love everybody, <laughs> you know? I mean, I not like, I mean, there are people that don't like me and I know that, you know, but, uh, but still, I don't, I don't live like that. I couldn't imagine. I just couldn't imagine. Not everybody is the same as, as we are. You know what I mean? And, and this is what was so sad when you see David Berkovich interviewed is he did have empathy. He wouldn't speak up. He was initially very scared because they threatened his father, who was actually his adoptive father. Um, his adoptive mother was actually dead because um, she, she died when he was a teenager um, but yeah, this is the thing is when you see him, but he was just such a, by him, if they'd have bumped him off in prison, it would have opened up more questions. So by keeping him alive, it's sort of keeping it shown. They knew that he was too scared to really talk up and, yeah. and do much about it. Although he and, did give away a lot of information in the end. And but not the brain fog of mind control. That's why I think John and Michael Carr, they worked on these kids from a very early age. Yeah. To mind control them and disassociate them and all that kind of stuff. And then when they started coming out of that, that's when I think you see the reality of their own moral compass. But, you know, it just as crappy as your childhood was, at least your parents weren't doing what Sam Carr was doing. You know, you always have to look like at least you weren't raised in a satanic gold. You know, that's that's the um that's that's the silver lining for all of us going, you know, shitty things happened in my childhood, but at least that wasn't one of them. <laughs> Because what we're learning, I know Jessica, you know a lot about this. What we're learning is that there are a hell of a lot, of, a lot more bad people in the world than we actually realized before all of this started. Because you're right, Jessica, we do look at the world, or at least I think that's the mistake. I know my therapist has said this, my boyfriend's therapist has said this. When you're a quote unquote healthy minded person, meaning you have empathy, you have a moral compass, you can't understand the thinking of somebody who doesn't have a healthy mind. Yeah. Does it make sense to you? to hurt an innocent girl coming home from a club or to hurt a girl coming home from school or to hurt a dog or to, to even strive to do so to cause chaos that would never occur to you to, to, to do that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a sad, we picked planet earth to come to, and this is, this is what, this is the ride we're on. So, so all right, you guys, anything you guys want to close out with before we sign off for today? No, I think I think I'm going to be watching Netflix for the rest of the day. Yeah, I think you were. It was absolutely fascinating. I was completely glued to it because I knew nothing about the case at all. And once it started, I was completely glued to it. And it's interesting for me. And it's interesting how much detail they do go into in that. Yeah. Series. Um, and isn't this the way that we're learning that it, they they don't want to make it an obvious cover up so it's fascinating to see that that information is out there so i can't wait to hear what you what you think and what you pick up jessica once you've watched it i think that would be really really interesting and i'll invite you here on the show jessica i've put a call out to i mean, i Catherine and i spoke about this off air and i don't even think i told you this i put i put the word out to some people that i know that we know that grew up in the in this cult to look through this case, they're whistleblowers now to look through this case and join us on another episode to see what they've seen in this case. And I'll Jessica come on with us for that group. Um, we don't have it scheduled yet. I've just reached out to them to like look through this stuff and give us feedback from what they spotted as someone who grew up like David Berkowitz, like in this and are now speaking out against it. So they can even point out stuff that we didn't even consider because yeah. Because we didn't grow up. Like, why girls with brown hair? You know, uh, Catherine and I, in our last episode, speculated over why it was a German Shepherd. Actually, I had no idea. Catherine brought up a good point because they're kind of the the real alpha of the dog. dog. <laughs> you got yours right there. That Speaking of which, I've got mine. She just she came up whining again. <laughs> she heard you yes, talking about German Shepherds, Bryce. But that yeah. gives me chill bumps because that... Honestly, that's one of the hardest things to face with this group is what they did to these dogs. Mm -hmm. That that was the hardest of everything because dogs are so innocent. Oh. What's her I name? Up with the German Shepherd as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous dog. So, yeah. And I think, um, you know, it is going to be absolutely fascinating to see what you, you think of this. And, um, 
yeah don't jump off because i've got someone else who's made a connection that i'll tell you both about before once we've stopped turn the cameras off awesome Ooh, suspense for our viewers though yeah <laughs> all right you guys. Worry, you'll be hearing about it viewers but i can't say their name on, on camera at the moment yeah we're trying to get everything together for you guys to continue this series once again i'm going to put our past episode with uh catherine down in the description box my untermeyer park episode and doug series um keep subscribing to his channel i don't know how long youtube will keep his channel up but i think rumble will probably keep it up longer so he, he is also on rumble and bit shoot so make sure you're subscribed and i'm going to be putting Catherine's channels and jessica's channels down in the description box as well so if you're not subscribed to Catherine or jessica go get subscribed because if you like this stuff we're talking about you will love both their channels if you're not already subscribed to them you guys and we'll 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 be doing this again very soon so i hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful day don't go hurting anybody just say no to satanic cults <laughs> they're not cute so so all right you guys bye guys bye, bye.